In this lesson, we'll talk about building views programmatically. You'll find the sample project in your working files directory. I've created a separate project called Views, and I've got a single view controller in here, and I want to override its load view method. So this is what we do when we want to programmatically define the view property. So the first thing I will do is create a new instance of UI view. So I'm going to set the view property to a new instance of UI view, calling its init with frame initializer. And this is the designated or default initializer for creating views programmatically. So I initialize this with the screen's bounding rectangle, and then set its background color to white. So I'll hit Command R and just run this so you can see this. We should have a white rectangle, and we do. I'll add some subviews in this load view method. So I'll create a new UI view. I'll initialize this with a rectangle using the CG rect make function, passing in the X, Y, width, and height coordinates. I'll set his background color to red, and I'm gonna give it a tag of 10. A tag is just a numeric identifier that allows us to easily retrieve this view from its super view. I'll add another view, essentially the same as before, but this time I will pass in a different X and Y location and I'll give it a background color of green and a tag value of 20. And a third one, same kind of thing, but changing its X and Y coordinates down into the right a little bit, setting its background color to blue and giving it a tag value of 30. Now let me run this again, but that still looks the same as it did before. And the reason is, is because I haven't added these views into the super views view hierarchy. So let's do that. I'd say self.view and add subview, then pass in v1 as a subview. Same thing for v2, and same thing for v3. Let's run that again. And there we go, we have a nicely stacked collection of views. Now you can see there's an implicit z ordering that happens based on the order in which I added those views. So I could actually change that if I changed the order in which I added these. So we can see now that V3 is the one at the bottom. Change that back to what it was. And a view can easily be asked for its subviews. Let me iterate through these. So in this case, I'm creating a for loop. And I'll say for UI view, view in self.view subviews. The subviews method will return an NS array of all of the subviews that it currently contains. We run this. And there we can see we've got current view 10, 20, 30. So all of the tags that I identified these views with. Because I've added these tags to the views, I can very easily get a reference to them by using that tag value. So if I want to say top view and ask the self.view for its view with tag, and I'll get a reference to the topmost view. And I'll set its background color to a purple color. So you can see we've now changed the topmost view's background color to purple. Now even though we have this implicit Z ordering of these views, I can still change its position in that hierarchy programmatically. So if I wanted to bring V2 to the top, I could call self.view bring subview to front and pass in V2. So that will make V2 now the topmost view. I can also exchange subviews. So I can say exchange subview at index with index. So if I wanted to make v1 the topmost view and v3 the bottommost view, I could do that by index. So I know v1 is at the zeroth position and v3 is at index number two. So there, that changed the z ordering for those views. I can also remove views from the hierarchy. So if I want to remove V2, I could say remove from super view. So that removed it entirely from the hierarchy. There are also cases where I might want to simply hide a view, but not necessarily take it out of the hierarchy. So I could say V2 hidden and set that to yes. So it's still in the hierarchy, but this time hidden. So I get a similar effect but I can verify that that's still in the hierarchy simply by iterating through those views again. 
so only two are showing up on screen, but I can see based on my console output, all three are still in that hierarchy. In this lesson, I've discussed building views programmatically. Now, this is certainly not an exhaustive look at the UI view API, but I wanted to give you a sense for what's involved when you go down this path. As much as possible, I would recommend building your views using Interface Builder as it's far easier to create and certainly easier to manage as you go along. But there are times where your user interface may be too dynamic to define statically in a tool like Interface Builder. And even when we are building things in Interface Builder, we often interact with the view APIs directly to customize components or change things about them dynamically at runtime. So when you do need to do things programmatically, the capabilities and features of the UI view API will have you covered.